Hello students, welcome back to the lecture series by Biogenesis. In this lecture of molecular biology, which is part 3 of mutations, we will be discussing about one of a uh, common reason for spontaneous mutations called as the spontaneous lesions. In the part 1 and part 2 lectures uploaded previously, we have seen that spontaneous mutation and induced mutation are two main categories of mutation. Spontaneous mutations on the other hand can be caused due to certain reasons. We had listed one of the reasons called as replicative error which was discussed in part 2. The another reason for spontaneous mutations which are naturally occurring mutation is spontaneous lesions. So this lecture of part 3 will be mainly discussing about the spontaneous lesions and one another reason for spontaneous mutation at the end called as transposable elements. So we will be finishing all the reason for spontaneous mutation today and coming on to reason number 2 after replicative errors. So this particular discussion is all about spontaneous lesion. What is spontaneous lesion? They are naturally occurring damages to DNA. What do you mean by naturally occurring? That means your DNA or the organism or the cell of the organism are not exposed to any mutagen but whatever is happening is happening naturally within the cell boundaries. Now there are three main type of spontaneous lesions right. So spontaneous lesion can be further divided into certain categories. The first category that I am going to list now is called as deep urination and deep pyrimidination. Now the word D as indicated over here the word or this particular initial D indicates the concept of removal of something right. So D means removal. So this is loss of purine or pyrimidine by breaking of which bond? Glycosidic bond. Everybody is clear with the basic concept of Y chemistry that the sugars and nitrogenous bases when they combine to form nucleoside or further with phosphate nucleotides, they are joined with the help of a certain bond called as glycosidic bond. I am focusing on this bond, meaning the sugar and the nitrogenous base, they are mainly linked together with the help of a which bond? The glycosidic bond. Now nitrogenous base can either be your purine or they can either be your pyrimidine. I hope that makes sense. So purine ho sakta hai ya pyrimidine ho sakta hai and they are joined with their respective sugar that is the deoxyribose sugar in case of DNA with the help of glycosidic bond. So one of the naturally happening damages to DNA is a possibility ki naturally either purine can be lost or pyrimidine can be lost and how they are getting lost the glycosidic bond linking them to the, with the sugar is actually broken down. Now this particular phenomena of deep urination or deep pyrimidination which is reason number one of spontaneous lesion it can result in the creation of something called as AP site. Now this can be very important question in CSIR and several other examination. What is the full form of AP site? A purinic or A pyrimidinic site. So A means without. So without purine or without pyrimidine site can be resulted. Now coming on to the next concept. We have a very important information and once again it is very important for almost every examination and also for part B CSR questions that the rate of deep urination is very high as compared to the rate of deep pyrimidination. Meaning rate of deep, deep urination is almost 20 times greater. It is almost 20 times greater compared to the rate of deep pyrimidination. Now what can be the possible reason? Actually, the glycosidic bond in case of pyrimidine is much stronger as compared to the glycosidic bond of purines. Therefore, it is easy for natural spontaneous lesion involving purine removal because lesser energy will be required to remove a purine as compared to a pyrimidine which has a very strong glycosidic bond. So the bond strength of glycosidic bond or in case of pyrimidine is very much stronger as compared to the purines and therefore the rate of purine removal is going to be very faster as compared to the pyrimidine removal. Coming on to the next case that we have after that is the oxidative damages right. So oxidative damage is the reason number two for naturally occurring damages called as spontaneous lesion. Now oxidative damages as the word indicate oxidative they are those damages which are happening to the DNA of a cell of an organism because of attack of something called as ROS. 
ROS stands for reactive oxygen species. Now reactive oxygen species can be of different types like super oxide, super oxide anions, the hydrogen peroxide, even the hydroxyl radicals. So super oxide anions ho sakte hai, hydrogen peroxide ho sakta hai, hydroxyl radicals ho sakte hai. These are common ROS or reactive oxygen species. Now uh, reactive oxygen species, uh, they can be uh, generated within a cell during various biochemical reaction and there are various common sites for ROS production like the endoplasmic reticulum, even the mitochondria, the peroxisomes, even exposure of certain things to a particular organism like pollutants, heavy metals, maybe uh, a number of uh, uh, let's say uh, we have uh, external or uh, uh, any toxin or any poisonous compound which you call as xenobiotics. So xenobiotics, external toxins or anything which can cause damage, they can also result in the production of ROS within the cells. But we, here we are mainly focusing that whenever naturally within the cell, the biochemical reaction result in ROS, then they can result in oxidative damage. Now oxidative damage can also result in certain products, modified products, right? Your uh, basis of DNA can be modified to something which can alter the entire DNA replication and can have effects on the expression also. We have one thing called as 8 oxo -DG full form 8 oxo 7 hydro deoxygonosin so this is not a normal guanine right this is not a normal g uh, nucleotide this is actually a modified product which is generated after attack from the reactive oxygen species what is the problem with 8 oxo dg it has a tendency to mispair with a now thymidine glycol normal thymine modified into something else thymidine glycol if it is being generated it completely blocks dna replication uh, exact mechanism uh, is not clearly understood but yes it causes problem with the activity of the dna polymerases also right now spontaneous lesion two reasons discussed till now one was your uh, the first thing which we had discussed called as uh, the deep urination and the deep pyrimidination and after that we had discussed second reason called as oxidative damage now uh, the third thing that we are now going to discuss about is a reason for spontaneous lesion called as deamination now uh, deamination is a very important thing right as the word indicates uh, deamination deamination ka meaning kya hai removal of an amine group and what is an amine group ns2 group i hope everybody understands and in our previous lecture we had given uh, some of the structures of even the uh, nucleotides and we had shown that even nucleotides can contain an outside or outside the ring ns2 group right so what i'm uh, uh, saying uh, in this case is that deamination means removal of amine group and there are three uh, bases which you have to remember which contain an exo exocyclic amine group or NH2 group. Now, the figure which is being shown on the board, it is showing those three uh, bases. That is, remember the word CAG, cytosine, adenine, and guanine. So, CAG, cytosine, adenine, and guanine, they contain an exocyclic amino group indicated with an arrow in the figure. And that amine group, if it is being removed or deamination happens, it can result into an altered base now we are going to understand about the deamination so the third thing that we have now as one of the main important reasons is something known as the deamination right so we have discussed a we have discussed b and now we are coming to reason number c of something called as the spontaneous lesion so deamination is nothing but removal of removal of the uh, ns2 group Right, so removal of the NS2 group and very important thing that we have to remember that uh, we need to remember three bases which contain exocyclic amino group. Aapko abhi initially figure may be depict kiya. So three bases C, A and G, uh, they are known to uh, contain exocyclic amino group. So they contain exocyclic amino group so the letter CAG cytosine adenine and guanine they contain exocyclic amino group and we will now be understanding some of the important example for example uh, if uh, cytosine undergoes uh, the uh, process of deamination indicated with minus ns2 if that is being removed it will result in the formation of uracil 
we have another uh, modified uh, group called as 5 methyl cytosine and if 5 methyl cytosine undergoes uh, deamination it results in the uh, formation of thymine so 5 methyl cytosine results in the formation of thymine then we have adenine adenine say we have generation of something called as hypoxanthin hypoxanthin so from adenine we have the uh, generation of hypoxanthin and uh, we have guanin and guanin ka minus n is to a deamination will result in the formation of xanthin this can be a direct question in the examination right so what we are seeing over here is that three bases i mentioned cag but there is one more modified base which can be found you must have heard methylation is very common on cytosine right so cytosine ka minus ns2 results in uracil formation 5 methyl cytosine say thymine formation adenine say hypoxanthin formation and guanine say xanthin formation i hope that is clear to everyone these were three main reasons of something called as the spontaneous lesion so aapne spontaneous mutation ke two reasons have been finished up one is called as your the replicative error which was the part 2 lecture on mutation then in part 3 we have finished off with something called as spontaneous lesion where we have discussed the three main categories clearly depyrination and depyrimidination oxidative damage and deamination coming on to last part of this chapter and henceforth after these lecture we will come into induced mutation right so the last reason which can possibly result in a spontaneous mutation are transposable elements so the last reason we are going to list now that so remember transposable element are uh, not going to result in spontaneous lesion but it is one of the reasons of spontaneous mutation so the last thing to finish off spontaneous mutation is transposable elements transposable elements so transposable elements are those elements or components of dna so elements or components of dna which can move from one part of the genome to another move from one part of the genome to other and they can result in can result in loss of function mutations also loss of function mutations also so uh, one of the possible reason of uh, naturally occurring damage is spontaneous uh, mutation ka ek jo karan that can be transposable element this particular topic will be a separate chapter where we will be discussing about transposable element but yes i can list down some of the examples for you for example in case of bacteria we have something called as is elements they are very common in prokaryotes in eukaryotes you can remember about the acds elements which are very common in eukaryote and they were discovered in case of maize then we can also have some of the example of p elements which were uh, once again found in a eukaryote and they are reported in case of what the drosophila species i hope that makes sense so that's all about the spontaneous mutations in the next lecture that will be the part 4 we will be understanding about induced mutations and what are different types of mutations thank you and have a good day